The first thing you want to do when you get a resin kit is prepare the walls. You want to sand them so that all the pieces fit together properly. Then you want to wash them in a soapy water solution and then let it dry thoroughly and give it a primer coat. I chose a light gray. Once you've done that, you're ready to proceed with painting the walls. I use acrylics, uh, they're cheap and uh, I don't react to them. So on the, this one, what I've done, this is the front of a Tom York kit. And on the back, there's no uh, grain. So I painted it a brown color and then I scratched some lines in it to give it some kind of texture. On the roof, this is to represent corrugated uh, siding. And I painted it sort of a light rust color on part of the bottom because that part will show through. The first color that I use is burnt umber. So a dark brown and it looks the color of some really old heavy rust. What I'm doing is I'm trying to paint right into the cracks at the bottom of the individual sheets of corrugated siding material. I want to make sure those cracks are filled in uh, because I don't want a, a gray streak showing up later. And I just work over this and what I'm trying to do is really get it down into the grooves of the corrugated material itself. What I'll do is add some water to the paint, thin it down a bit and try it. And if it works just right, that's great. And what you can also do is you can take uh, some water and spray the casting itself and then paint, which helps it to go on even smoother. But again, the object of this is not to paint it a solid brown. If you wanted a solid brown, you could just spray it with a, a brown colored paint. So I've made it wet with a little water and I'm just Spreading this out and really, again, trying to get it down into the grooves. And I want to make sure there's no globs or anything showing. So once that's completely dry, then uh, I'm going to start using other colors on top of it. This is burnt sienna. This is a, a very nice rust color to, to my, my eye and I'm going to start applying it. And I'm again, I'm not trying to cover the whole thing. I'm just putting the color on in different areas because uh, I want a lot of variety. Again, I'm not trying to paint this a reddish rust color. I'm just trying to get a variety of colors on it. So we're continuing to work with uh, this particular color, and we want to add a few other colors as well. This particular color is a cinnamon color, and it's a very thin paint. It's very watery. I put a lot of water in it, so it's very thin uh, as it comes out of the container. But again, I'm just putting little bits of this color on the rust again. We want a lot of variety in the color of rust really important as you go around, you look at rusted uh, buildings, uh, really think about how that rust appears. Now this is a color called Spanish tile. And again, it's sort of an orangish color. So I'm going to take a little bit of that. And you'll notice when I put paint on my brush, I don't put a lot of paint on it. I put just very small amounts. And what I'm going to do now, is I'm going to focus on um, defining the edges of the different individual corrugated sheets. So what I'm doing is I'm going right to the edge of one and I'm highlighting along that far edge and I'm keeping the lower edge uh, pretty much the color that it was so that there'll be a contrast. I want to do that on other pieces here as well. We want this to look like this as individual sheets of corrugated metal rather than this one casting. So again, there again at the top of that individual sheet, highlighting it, leaving the bottom that darker color. 
Now on this one, I've always put a little bit, but uh, I don't want it too sharp contrast, but I do want it to look like individual sheets. So I just continue working over this. Again, working, trying to make it look like individual pieces. There's no rhyme or reason to the pattern here. It's just however it happens to turn out and what looks good to your eye. When you build a model, don't build it to satisfy me. Don't build it to satisfy some guy in Texas. Build it for your own pleasure. So it should look like what you want it to look like. Just continuing to highlight that to make like individual sheets. Hopefully you can see that there's a contrast there on the different edges of the individual pieces. Now, one other color I'm going to add. Well, I'm going to add, go add a little bit more of the burnt sienna. I'm going to put a little bit uh, on there and touch over some places that uh, I really uh, wanted to change a little bit. As you do this, you can go back over and touch up things again later. So again, I'm just uh, trying to have that uh, distinctive edge along on the different pieces of corrugated siding. There's lots of variations in the color of uh, rust. So uh, this Spanish tile is a color that I really like, but notice I'm mixing it with a yellowish color, sort of a golden color. And see how much brighter that orange is? And when you look at corrugated metal, you're going to see a lot of variety in colors. So as you go around, try to take pictures, use them as reference. And again, just do this and do it in such a way that it looks good to you. If you don't like it, you can certainly just paint over it and start again. I also uh, encourage people, especially if you're new, uh, not necessarily to work on models themselves, but you can uh, go to a garage sale and pick up some kids' toys, uh, matchbox cars and things like that. You can experiment uh, rusting them rather than just doing it on an expensive kit. So that about wraps that part up. So what we're going to do next, we're going to move on to doing the walls. Now, on a kit, obviously on a structure, there's several walls, but we're just going to focus on one. And again, this is a, a Tom York O-scale kit that we're working on. This is his assay office. And you see those boards, Tom goes to really extreme measures to make look like this was really crudely put together and that it also was weathered an awful lot. So what we're going to do, I'm going to start with that same color that we did before, and that's the burnt umber. And what I'm going to do with the burnt umber is I'm going to make sure I work it under the individual cracks of the different boards. I, I, I want to make sure I get it back under there really good, and then I'll address the rest of the wall. And again, we're not painting this a solid color. We're just painting this in such a way as to uh, get some brown on there, lots of variation, because this is going to be a heavily weathered wall. Now, for purposes of demonstration in this video, I'm going to show extreme weathering. But what you do when you build a model, if you don't like it that weathered, well, then stop halfway through. When you get to the point that it looks good to you, stop. That's one of the secrets of successful weather, weathering is to do it as much as you want and then stop. Look at it, let it sit there for a day and see if you like it. If not, uh, do it again or add some more weathering to it. So we didn't paint this a, a, a solid brown. As you can see, uh, it's different uh, variations of brown. 
We also let this dry completely. What we're adding now is some Elmer's rubber cement. I put a little daub on my uh, work surface and I'm using this toothpick and I'm not covering the whole wall with the rubber cement. I'm going along right at the bottom edge of different planks, different amounts of rubber cement on, on different planks. What we're doing you in real life, the edges of the planks get more weathering than it does uh, back up uh, where the planks join together. That area stays pretty dark as a, as a rule. The paint stays there pretty good. So I'm just going over the whole structure. Now, what I'm going to do a little later, I'm going to remove most of uh, the rubber cement, but not all. When you remove most of it, when you pull it up, after you've given it your color coat, uh, it exposes the brown wood underneath to make it look like a paint has peeled off completely. Areas that have been painted and you don't remove it, it makes it look like that paint is bubbling up, that it's about ready to fall off. So we just do this. Uh, there's no rhyme or reason to this. There's no rules about this. Just put on as much as you want. Now it's important to let that thoroughly dry. Now the color that I've chosen to use with this is antique parchment. And on the screen, it probably looks like pure white, but it's really an off-white. You can use just any color you want. I prefer colors that have a lot of contrast to the color of the wood underneath. Now as I apply this, I'm not trying to cover the brown completely. I put very tiny amounts of paint on my paintbrush and I'm using a, a dry brush technique in which I'm just uh, letting the rough edges of the wood uh, pick the paint off of my brush. And I just work up from the bottom to the top. Just continuing to add that, uh, try brushing that white on there. Just put on as much as you want. And when you're done dry brushing it, you can leave it this way if you want. Uh, use the tape to peel off some of the paint. Or, as I'm going to show you shortly, you can go ahead and add more white uh, to this wall and make it a more uh, newer color. So again, we're just trying to get the whole area colored. Just want it to look right to your eye. One thing you can do when you do a wall like this is you can take a little piece of paper, cut it square, paint it a gray, and rust it and you can actually glue it on to the wall uh, and make it look like you've put a metal patch over the wood where the, the air was getting to the people inside. Uh, lots of little things you can do to uh, improve a wall like this. I'm going back and adding some of the, the brown the, that we used earlier. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to use a little piece of sponge. And I'm going to start at the bottom and just add little bits of color. And you can stop right there at the bottom because it wears more at the bottom. Or you continue up the side of the wall. Uh, just uh, use this as just a, another way of applying paint. And on all these things, what we're wanting to do, we're wanting to put different layers of paint on rather than painting in a solid color. Now, after I've added that, I'm going back over certain areas and adding a little bit more of the antique parchment white.
when I work on a wall like this, it probably takes me, I probably spend 30 to 45 minutes on an individual wall, not counting time for it to, to dry. And that's what I do is I make sure I let it dry between these different steps. Now the next thing I'm doing is I'm going to add a color called linen. And it's a, a very a very light color brown. And again, I'm just painting little areas so that we have three different colors here. We have the uh, dark brown, we have the uh, off-white, then we have a little bit of brown. Not very much. I'm not trying to paint the whole thing. I'm just adding little bits here and there, trying to make it look like when you look at the model that you actually see it as being individual boards rather than as a resin casting. You can apply as much or as little as you want. Then again, we let that dry completely. We look at it, see if it looks good to us. Then what we're gonna do is we're going to add some uh, of the more of the antique parchment and I'm going to spray a little Windex on that. And what Windex does is it really thins it down and lets it get down into the cracks. And what I'm doing here is I'm again I'm not trying to paint this whole wall white. I'm just giving it a a, a good wash. It'll still have uh, lots of uh, detail and uh, rough appearance, but I'm just doing this just to uh, uh, do this and further this technique. If you leave it just the way it was before this, that's fine too. But what I'm trying to do here, I'm trying to show different ways of doing a wall, uh, all working on the same wall, but uh, just putting small amounts on. There's that little area there that I've sort of missed and I'm working on now, and I don't know what Tom had in mind there. I think maybe there's supposed to be a window there that's missing that has been boarded up, but I'm not sure. So we let that dry completely, and we check it out and see how it looks. Now we're going to go with our masking tape and do the next step. Now I'm really pressing the tape down hard, but unfortunately wearing these uh, latex gloves, <laughs> the gloves moved back and forth enough that I wasn't really able to do it. So what I needed to do was tear uh, uh, the glove off one of the fingers so that I could push it on there a little more strongly. Uh, so I'm going back with another clean piece of tape, putting it on. Now I'm really pushing down into the grooves and everything with my finger. And when you pull it off, See how it pulls off and leaves areas of the uh, dark wood exposed? Just keep doing that. You can do this several times. Do it till it gets to the point to where the, the wall looks the way you want it to look. It's always more weathered at the bottom of the wall than it is at the top. Always weathered more at the edges. Now what you can also do, and what I'm doing here, so I'm taking an X-Acto knife and I'm going along right along the edges of the planks and I'm actually uh, pulling up some of the uh, rubber cement that didn't come up before and I'm just trying to individualize it so that it looks just right to my eye. After you get done doing this part, you want to take another strip of tape, press it down on it and peel it off to lift up all the little bits of rubber cement and paint that you've actually peeled up. That's what I'm doing there. Just doing, just doing this to clean it up. Now the back of the false front doesn't have any detail on it. So what I did was I took a razor saw and a wire brush and I scraped the back to give it some grain. And then I drew some heavy marks on it, uh, one quarter inch apart to look, make it look more like individual planks. Then I painted it with the uh, burnt sienna. 
Now here I'm again using the same white and I'm just dry brushing it on. Now on a building like this, if they painted the back of this building when it was new, uh, that was probably all they ever did. I doubt they ever climbed up there and painted it again. Now this color I'm adding is Territorial Beige and it's a, a nice color. And I'm mixing it a little bit with the white and just putting different amounts on. Again, I'm trying to make it look like individual boards. You have to avoid making it striped like a, a zebra, but you do want co different colorations on the boards so that they uh, look individual. You can also take the back of your uh, knife and scratch more detail into this, add more grain to it if you want. Now on the floor of the building, normally on a building like this, I will build a floor separately rather than using a casting. But for the purposes of this video, I'm going to paint it. Now this particular mm -hmm. color is called barn wood. And it's a very, it's, it's, you can see it's, it's not really gray, it's sort of a brownish color. But uh, it, it works very nice to give a, a good representation of old weathered wood. Now the floor or the sidewalk out in front of the building of course would never be painted uh, so it would just be a natural weathered wood. So I have the light gray of the primer then I'm adding this little bit of this barn wood color to it. Then I'm picking up a little bit of the white that I had left over and I'm making different stripes on there. See I'm just trying to make it look like those are individual boards. Just continue working along with it. Different colors, again, trying to make them look like individual boards. There's lots of different ways to do this. Now what I'm doing here is scratching down between the boards a little bit uh, to remove some of the paint to see if that helps. And what I've decided to do is I've taken uh, an alcohol and shoe dye mixture. This is a mixture of brown and black together. Okay, it's shoe dye, not shoe polish. And after the, the paint has dried, it's fine to go over it with uh, a color like this. And when this dries, it'll, it'll look pretty much, to my eye at least, what a lot of natural wood would look like after people have walked on it for a while. You want to make sure you paint the edges and everything. So I'm also going to do that on the back of the false front building. Just going to put that stain on there and I always paint in the direction of the grain of the wood. Again, trying to make it look different. One tip on my bottle of alcohol you see I've got a, a straw there you can just keep your paintbrush right in there in the straw I taped that straw in there probably 20 years ago and it's still there so I just uh, touch it up a little bit with a back of a knife just to see what the effect is then I'm actually going to take some Kleenex and I'm just going to daub it to remove some of the color and I do that on the floor as well. Okay, that's it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Have fun with your buildings.